All right, everyone. So for uh, day two of the class, uh, I've got an activity for us. Uh, this is a foundational concept that we need to talk about, which is a company profile. We'll see why that matters, uh, how to use it, why it's important. And then we'll go on to other topics such as webmaster tools. Uh, we need to see, we need to talk about various concepts like uh, some of these keywords. So I've got a, a notepad file open to write some notes and I'm going to put my notes in the network folder. I'll remind you where that's at a little later. But I'm going to write a couple of notes. You can do so on paper or on the computer if you'd like. But I'll be writing notes throughout the day. And first what I want to bring up is this concept of impressions versus conversions. And together, that basically equals CTR, which is click-through rate. There's this keyword, there's this buzzword, jargon, in this industry called impressions. And another one is called conversions. Now, what impressions are, it's any example when your content is seen by people. So impressions, when your content is seen by people. So let's say someone does a search on Yahoo and my website appears. That's an impression. Simply that my website appeared on a search engine. Or let's say I'm active on Twitter and I tweeted something and someone saw it on Twitter. That was an impression. They simply saw it. Then we've got conversions. When someone interacts with your content. Conversions. So let's say, getting back to the Yahoo search, uh, someone sees my link. Great, I got an impression. But then someone clicked the link to go to my website. That was a conversion. Because they were converted from a non- viewer into a viewer of my website. They were converted. Same thing on Twitter. <clears throat> I tweeted something on, on Twitter about a coupon that's being offered 20% off. A hundred people saw it. Impressions. But two people clicked on it. Conversions. So a conversion is when someone does something. You might also hear it as a goal. Conversion goals although I think that's a bit redundant. It's either goal or conversion, not really conversion goal. Conversions, goals, accomplishments, but the, the big buzzword is conversions, when someone interacts with your content. So let's say I'm trying to sell cupcakes. I've got Victor's Bakery, I'm selling cupcakes. Uh, I've sold a cupcake, that's a conversion. Someone went to the website, they clicked buy, they were converted from a non-buyer to a buyer. And conversions also apply in the real world. Impressions and conversions. That billboard that I had printed uh, on, the, on the five, people see it. Well, that, those are impressions. Lots of people see that billboard, perhaps, but a lot less people actually then become conversions, that they actually do something about it, such as call the phone number on the billboard or download the app or whatever I'm saying on my billboard. So that's when actually someone interacts. <clears throat> yes? Is the conversion, is that any interaction or is it specifically if some goal is that you like to sell something? Or you sell it's, something like it's any interaction because it's up to you to decide what your conversions are. Mm -hmm. I want my main conversion to be selling something. So if I don't get any of those sales, I have a very low conversion rate. Uh, but we will see that we should have multiple conversions, we should have multiple goals to go for, and perhaps the ultimate conversion is the sales. Uh, we can then do talk about CTR, which is basically um, uh, C divided by R equals CTR. What am I trying to say there? I'm sorry, uh, C divided by I equals CTR. What, what does that formula mean there? Conversions divided by impressions. Exactly. 
conversions divided by impressions, CTR divided by R equals CTR, click through rate. If you take the number of conversions that actually happened and divide it by the number of impressions, that's a measurement, one of many measurements, to see how effective you're being in social media, in SEO, etc. So to give the example, let's say we had, let's say Twitter tells us we had 768 impressions. 768 people saw my tweet. And out of that, I had... 98 conversions, 98 actual clicks. So if I do the math, 98 divided by 768, that becomes 12.7%. Let's round it up, 12.8%. 12.8%. CTR. So you had a success rate, quote-unquote, of 12.8%. Uh, is that good or bad? It depends on your company. It depends on your conversion goal. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Obviously, I want a CTR of 100%. I want every single one of my impressions to yield a conversion. Keep dreaming. That's not going to happen. Uh, even with the biggest companies, you know, Coca-Cola, Apple, Microsoft, they never get... 100%. They never get 90%. They never get 80, 70, 50. They get a big range of results because they're spending so much money and effort to try to reach people. They're putting out so many conversions. It's like fishing, you know, it's like going going fishing. You cast that lure out and maybe you catch a fish, maybe you don't. But you don't catch a fish until you try. And you may have fished all day long for five hours and you got two fish and that was a great day out of five hours. <coughs> And for other people, that would have been, I should have caught 100 fish in five hours. But whatever value this is for you, you have to decide if it's good or bad based on the effort you're putting in, the time you're putting in, the money you might be putting in. So those values, we will be able to, to see that. When we set up the webmaster tools later today, We'll be able to see this. We'll be able to see how many impressions, how many times my website was seen on a Google search results page, on a Bing results page. I'll be able to see how many impressions. Better yet, I'll be able to see how many clicks, which are conversions. And yes, there's then the question, okay, well, I really care most about sales, selling a product. That could be a conversion goal also. And I'll list several of them as, as the day goes on and such possibilities, goals to try to accomplish. Uh, so we'll get to that, but here's the big concept for the moment. So any questions on that? Um, many times people come to a, uh, an SEO class and then uh, want to get tangible results right away. You learn something and you want to get lots of clicks right away. Well, getting those clicks, that's a conversion that I'm trying to achieve. Are you doing all that you can to get to the conversion, to increase your CTR? So one of the failures that often happens with people that are trying to optimize their site is that they don't, uh, they don't lay a good foundation. We started that last time when we had the uh, competitor analysis activity, when we uh, you know, researched the competition and wrote down notes about what they were doing. When we developed our keywords, the basic keywords and long tail keywords, that's foundational stuff. That stuff informs what you need to do to get more traffic. We're going to do another foundational activity here. So I've got a new document for you in the network folder. Let me remind you where that's where that's at. Your computer should be on and on the top left corner you want to double click the computer window and you will see the various drives. One of them is in the network location classroom data drive Z as in zebra. Double click classroom data Z. and scroll down to find our class, which is Campos SEO. We'll find a folder called Campos SEO. Double-click that folder.
The notes that I wrote last week are there in case you want a copy of them. The syllabus is right here if you're new. And, and, and the syllabus also has my email in case you need to send me an email about the uh, about the uh, videos. Uh, and uh, those are my notes about the competitor analysis that I wrote. And for the moment, I have a new handout for you, Client Company Profile. You want to drag that to your desktop or flash drive, preferably flash drive. Drag that to your flash drive. If you didn't bring a flash drive, just drag it to the desktop. You don't want to double click it from my network folder. You want to drag it to your desktop, close the network folder, and then open your copy of the classroom data, uh, classroom uh, client, client company profile. The printer's off at the moment. You wouldn't really want to print this anyway. I'll tell you why in a moment, but there's the file. Uh, if you have any trouble finding it, call me over. File. All right, so let's take a look at this file. Again, this is not homework. This is not anything that you need to fill out and turn in. You don't really need to print it because if you are going to do this, you would want to type in here. Uh, you can do it, and I can look at it and give you opinions and such, but it's not homework. It is foundational, and I'll explain, of course, why it'll be valuable in the realms of SEO. This is a version of what my company would do if we were hired by another company. If they hired us to do SEO for them, well, we'd want to do the best job for them. We'd want to run social media the best. We'd want to figure out their keywords the best. We'd want to do the best job. Now, that would be difficult if we don't know as much about the company as possible. Obviously, the people that work in the company are the best ones that know about the company. But they don't know about SEO or they don't know about social media and such. So our job then would be to learn as much about the company as possible. For yourself, that you already know your company, this is still valuable for you to articulate this, to write this down and have it written somewhere so that you can use it throughout your website or social media and so forth. So this activity is the company profile. If you choose to do this, you would put your company name, your name, the date. This may change as you learn more. As things evolve, you may do different versions of this, build on top of it. But there's various things here that that should be answered for you to craft your company profile. This is a form, this and another activity I'll have later, is a form of the marketing, is an aspect of marketing, which is an aspect of SEO. Because it's not just about SEO, it's also SEM. Remember last time we talked SEO, search engine optimization, and SEM, search engine marketing? This is the part of marketing. How do you define your company to market it to reach more people, to get more traffic, to make more conversions. So there's a spot here to add your company name and obviously you can simply write the name of your company, Victor's Bakery. But the question here, what is the name of your company? Why did you choose the name? Does it have a special meaning or story? For example, my web design company will be Vic.co, pronounced Vic.co, and it comes from my name. So I could have simply written the answer Vic.co and if some of you read it you would think about pronouncing it a certain way or a different way but here I'm defining right in this company name section that the name of that fictional company should be at least pronounced like this Vic.co and I could go on into deeper detail here writing well I named this company after my grandfather because he was a pioneer in web design and a great inspiration to me well what does that matter for SEO it matters because you're building this uh, content for your website uh, so that then you can use it on your website, on social media, etc. 
And the more content that you create, relevant content, the more possibility of being found by people searching for you. Let's say I wrote here part of the company name. Again, I wrote that story. Maybe wrote something about family owned and, you know, believing in the concepts of uh, modern design and such. And someone searches for those keywords. Your website has those keywords then. If you have, for example, an about page and you wrote some of this, this would also be useful for adding on your Twitter page if you've got it. So defining as much about the company as possible. Think always in terms of the big companies. Think in terms of Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Apple. You know, think of these big companies. Of course they've got all of this defined. They've got an official book for their company. Everything spelled out. This and, and many other things that we'll talk about. That helps them inform their strategy to do marketing, to get traffic, to make sales. Every big company has a tagline. Every small company should have a tagline. Think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about. Think of some famous taglines. Why do they stick? Your tagline could also be a concise statement about your company if its name is not immediately understandable. So for example, Vic.co, a great company for your great website. Because if you take Vic.co out of context without me telling you what it is, what would you think Vic.co is about? I have no idea what they sell, what they do, what their product is. But if I couple that with a simple tagline, a great company for your great website. Okay, now I'm understanding, hopefully, that Vic.co is about websites. And I need a website. I need a great website. Vic.co. Now, obviously, a great tagline, you might not be able to think about it on the spot. That is part of the art and science of marketing. And do you think... How many millions of dollars do you think McDonald's spent on figuring out, I'm loving it? Three simple words, millions of dollars to figure out with a marketing team. I'm loving it. And that's their current, I think that's still their current marketing tagline for McDonald's. What about this famous one? What company is that one? Nike. Nike. That one was also most likely a lot of effort to figure out. Because if you take Just Do It out of context, out of the 40 years of context, that would fit just fine for a tax preparation company. Your taxes, just do it. Right? It still applies. I'm loving it, doing my taxes. So any of these taglines for these big companies, really, if you take them out of context, they, they could work for anything. But because of the name of the company, the history of the company, and the tagline, it works. For us as little companies, I perhaps wouldn't get so prosaic at the moment. I wouldn't get so artistic at the moment to think of a tagline that speaks to the soul and all of that. I would may maybe speak more to the mind in that what does the tagline tell a person in one second about your company that has never heard of you. So here I've got a much more literal type of tagline. Yes, that could be applied to any web design company, but at the least it tells people what Vic.co is when they see that name and tagline together. And take note that I say could be a concise statement for your company if its name is not immediately understandable. So really, if the name of your company doesn't make sense for people that will hear it the first time, definitely think of a tagline that will help people understand what the company is at first blush. Like, for example, pmdinteractive.com my company. If you, if I hadn't told you, if you didn't know it was related to me and what we do, then you'd say, well, PMD Interactive, what does that mean? What do they do? I don't know, but then the tagline is, you know, online web solutions to help you succeed. That makes it, that makes PMD Interactive make sense. There's a little spot to write some about us information. And this stuff could basically go onto your About Us screen. Let me take a detour from my notes over here. Recommended, I might have mentioned it before, but I'll mention it again. Recommended pages for your site. It's recommended you've got an About Us type of page. 
about me, about the company, about the product, whatever. Some sort of about page. You know, who we are, what, why we do this. Basically answering many of these questions. It's recommended you have a contact page. Some sort of contact us, contact me, contact the company, whatever. And then also a blog. It's recommended you have these three pages on your site. Because think about how the spammers don't have these pages. The spam sites that are selling you genuine, authentic, affordable Rolex watches. They don't have these pages. And if they do, they are, it is stolen content from some other site. The search engines are running 24 hours a day, scanning every single website they find. Of course they're going to find eventually this about page that looks exactly the same as this other about page. And as I said previously, the search engines are basically operate under guilty until proven innocent. Guilt by association. Shoot first, ask questions later. The search engines in their constant battle against spam have to be very strict. And if you fall, run afoul against any of the no-nos that the search engines tell you not to do, you'll be labeled a spammer. I'll believe you're not a spammer, but Google won't. Bing won't. Shoot first, ask questions later. Guilty until proven innocent. And so if your page doesn't have an about us, a contact us, and a blog, that might be telling the search engines this might not be the most legitimate site, even though I believe you, you're legitimate. Because the spammers don't have legitimate contact information, they don't have any phone number, they don't have any email, they have no way to get in contact for you to get back that money you spent on that genuine, authentic Italian, Italian suit. So, we'll talk about blogs also, but in short, blogs are the way to create content to build your authority to help you rank. Remember last week we talked about the concepts of authority, of longevity, authority, and content? The blog helps with that. Yes? Um, do you have any tips for, like, if you want to have your contact us page and um, you don't want to, like, have your information out there to be scanned, um, do you have a tip for how to, like, conceal it over there? Well, that's a catch-22 because you do want your legitimate information out there to be scanned and found for the benefit of customers and the benefit of the search engines, which will benefit your customers. What I would say about that, though, is um, don't put your email naked on your site. Meaning, don't put your email as simply contact at victor.com. Don't simply put it out there on your website, or don't make it an active link It says, you know, click here to email us with an active link. Don't do that either. Don't put it out there naked. Because every single email address in the world has a format of something at something dot something. Every one of them. Victor at Victor dot com. John Smith at gmail dot com. Uh, products at myproducts dot biz. They've all got that exact pattern. And computers are very good at recognizing patterns. So don't you think that there are various spam bots running 24 hours a day harvesting email addresses? Don't you know? Don't worry about the don't worry about the search engines scanning you. Worry about the spammers scanning you. So don't put your email address naked. Instead, put a contact form. A contact form is one level of protection where someone has to fill out the form to send you an email. And that usually does some is done through some pro, uh, programming, some processing, and a spam bot might not be able to go through that form, especially if it is set up uh, using a captcha, and and the captcha is just the that you know those gibberish words that appear whenever you're trying to log in someplace and says please fill in these these letters and numbers, that's a captcha. So you should have you should look up on your site somehow how do I add a contact form number one and how do I secure it with captcha. Um, in addition to that, uh, on that contact info, um, if you don't want to put your, your real phone number and such, because you don't want spammers and such to find it, uh, I would um, uh, get a Google Voice number. 
phone number. Google will give you a free phone number, a Google Voice number, uh, and you can pick the number and then it, uh, what you do with it is it, it attaches to a real phone. So I go, I get a free Google Voice number, and so I get a brand new phone number, and I put that phone number on my website instead of my real phone number, my home number and such, and people can call that number, leave a voice message there, they won't see your real number. And then lastly, if you put your, your address, you know, I wouldn't put my home address, let's say I'm running my business out of my garage, I don't want my real phone number out there, you can get a P.O. box. Get a P.O. box to have an address. And nowadays, I think most post offices let you put the actual street address of the, of the post office, not the number, because it might look kind of sketchy. P.O. box 21993. San Diego, California, people are going to say, yeah, any spammer can create a, uh, a P.O. box. But I know my local post office lets you do 830, 803, Coon Drive, number 2139, whatever. That looks more like a real place than a P.O. box. It's still the P.O. box. But now they're letting you put the address, and that's for the post office. I don't know for mailboxes, et cetera, and all of those places. Those are some possible ways to have contact information that doesn't expose your information because I do still recommend, you know, don't hide it, put something there, be more legitimate, and, and the search engine will like that. Questions? How does it know that it's a post box or a PO box number? How do you know the seats? Uh, the post office gets it. Right? Well, the, the post, post office is going to get it in their inbox. The post office itself is going to get it and they're going to see, oh, it's, it's PO box number 21993. So it'll still go to the right spot. And you can still put your company name or both. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, each post office in the U.S. has its own unique zip code, and each P.O. box, the zip plus four is unique to that particular box. Oh. So you don't even need a street address. You can just say San Diego, California, 91911. Dash sure, but that'll look a little weird for people, I think, if there's no main address there. They'll say there's but it no will work. I'm just saying. Yeah. It will get your mail there. Question? Yeah. Um, when uh, I signed up for a domain, um, I think it was GoDaddy, they, um, they asked for the contact details, and then um, after you finish that, they say, well, if you don't want that to be public, mm -hmm. then you got to pay. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I was wondering, what are the, you know, what are, what's your opinion of the risks involved in it? What that is, is a standard internet practices of having some sort of legitimate contact information for a website. Um, technically, you could fill that out all in fake. I don't recommend it because your website could be revoked if it is fake information. That's why these companies do sell privacy for an additional, I don't know, $5 a month or something. $10 a year, I don't know, they sell an extra bit of privacy where instead of you putting fake information or your real info, GoDaddy will put in some legitimate dummy information that protects your, that protects your, your name and such online. Uh, in theory, the, that information there is supposed to be used for legitimate purposes. One of the fields in there is, you know, administrative contact, technical contact, and it's supposed to be that if there's a problem with your website, someone can call the tech support of the website. But obviously spammers can look that up and harvest that information and use it for nefarious purposes. So it is okay to get the private registration from these companies. Um, I don't recommend to make it up, even though technically you could. Uh, but again, if you do create that information, you've got some of this PO Box information and Google Voice number to kind of protect you to that. So that's up to you how to fill that in. Um, so we'll go into details about these other ones like blogs and such. But this is all getting to be about uh, here, about this, uh, this about us information. What am I going to write in about us? Well, here's some ideas. Write a, a paragraph about your company. Who founded it? What is it about? When did you get the idea for it? Where was it founded? Why are you in the business? How will you make the company a success? And these answers will help fill your biography on various sites. It could go on your About page. Snippets of that can go on your Twitter profile, on your Facebook, because all of those also, all the social networks give you some space to write a biography. You should uh, fill that biography in on all the networks, because that's also how you can get found. You've got those keywords that people can search on Twitter and find your site. 
those keywords, that bio that you wrote in Pinterest that can help your pins get found to make those sales. Notice here it's the classic who, what, when, where, why, how questions. The more of these you can answer, the better about us info you can craft. The more of them you can answer. <coughs> There's also a section about thinking uh, about writing a mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. So mission statement. What are you trying to accomplish? What's your business trying to accomplish? Your website, your online presence, whatever the mission of your company. Think in terms again about what's in it for the customer. Great, another web design company. Great, another uh, vegan bake shop. Great, another dog walking business. But what's valuable to me, the customer, about it? What's new for me? Why would I hire you? What makes you unique? That could be difficult to answer unless you know yourself, unless you know your company, really, and what is unique about it. I just had a meeting very recently uh, with, a, with a company who's, who's, uh, who's got an amazing product, honestly. They've got something I've never seen before. Everyone knows that you know there's tile, stone tile and such, and you can get it for your, your house and bathroom and such. But this company is involved in, in high-quality wood tile. I hardly see that, and the samples that I saw look really impressive, handcrafted, high-quality wood tiles. They're having a little trouble attracting customers and such. And so after talking with them and figuring out, you've got this great, unique product. Your mission statement has got to be all about that, you know, high-quality, unique, upscale, um, tile that is not available anywhere else and that will add a touch of elegance to your uh, to your floor that you won't see anywhere else. So there's plenty of tile companies out there. There's plenty of other uh, much more affordable tile companies. But you do know or you should know that you get better results, better quality, the more you're willing to spend. And so you might have a product that is expensive, but you have to talk about why it would be valuable for people to spend a little more. That in the long term it's more durable, it's prettier, it lasts longer, and so forth. Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. Here we're talking about terms like beautiful and discerning a region, Southern California. We can make websites for anyone in California, or the US, or internationally, sure. But this will get us thinking about it, and we'll get into it deeper later, about a target audience. It might be a good idea to focus on a target audience. There's plenty of web design companies out there, and any one of them could, you know, I could hire a web design company from New York to do the job or from Mumbai, or wherever. They're all going to do probably a good job. But what's our mission is to get hired by a Southern California clientele. Because we're in the area, we're in the same time zone, we know the culture, um, we live here, we, want, we believe in the area, in the region, we want to make great, beautiful websites for people in this region. That's our mission. Of course we can still make websites for someone in New York. But then you have to think about overextending yourself or diluting your message and so forth. So we'll have a, a talk a little later about uh, target audience. And don't be afraid in the mission statement in any of this to be artistic, to, be, to use flowery language, to use language, if appropriate, to better reach an audience. Love them or hate them, Apple is one of the most valuable companies in the world, in all of humanity. Uh, they've been so profitable, made billions of dollars, and continue to do so, and they had a bad quarter last year. They didn't make like an extra $10 billion. Mm -hmm. So Apple's obviously struggling. 
but the uh, the thing is, Apple and many companies that are successful have a very success are often very successful because they have a, a great marketing arm. You don't really need that iPhone. You don't really need that brand new Microsoft Surface. You don't really need those brand new Nike shoes. You want them. You know, there's needs and wants, and advertisers, marketers are really good at telling you that your wants are needs. But in in terms of, of SEO and such, you still have to think about what's my product, how do I get people to want my product, to need my product, and I've got to convince them. Because marketing is a form of advertising, and basically all advertising is some version of making you feel bad. You're hungry, come buy this hamburger. You smell bad, buy this product. Uh, you can't get a date, buy this. You know, everything, many things, if you really break it down in marketing, can be defined in how, what's your problem, and here's our solution. Buy our product, you will be better this way. Obviously, that's the most extreme, cynical aspect of it. I don't want to, you know, denigrate your company and such. You obviously have a product you're, you believe in that you want to sell, you want to get traffic for and such, but you still have to think about convincing people. And so this mission statement, maybe... 2% of people ever look at the mission statement on your site. But this, these concepts and keywords that you're writing here could still help you get found when people search for family-owned bakery in Eastlake. And I wrote that in my mission statement. So it's about the content. Speaking of keywords, here's a way to create some keywords in in, in a more organic way rather than a simple list of keywords in a mechanical list of keywords here we've got values what are some keywords that your company believes in for example orderliness teamwork discipline and I just remembered I think this link is broken but this is a link this is a link for keywords yeah I thought I fixed that um, well we can easily go online and search for company list of company values. And we can search for this, but I've got a few examples here. Orderliness, teamwork, discipline, efficiency, creativity, and tolerance. And then we can find more examples. The point of this, again, is keywords. Keywords that your company believes in. Keywords that people are going to be searching for when they're trying to find a company that they want to purchase from, that they believe in. If I really care about the environment, I'm going to support companies that have those kinds of values, not the ones that are into strip mining and all of that. And if I make it obvious, I make it clear on my website or throughout my content that I create that I have these same values that you do, perhaps I'll get hired. Perhaps I'll make sales. Perhaps I'll get those donations. And so where would you add this to your site and such? It would be mixed in through the actual content of your site via blogs and so forth. So let me make a note here. Blog. Best used to create the content about your values, mission statement. You know, everything that we're talking about in this sheet here. You're not just going to throw it up on your site. You're going to think about writing blogs that have these things integrated into them. These this text that we're developing, we're going to add it organically to the site via blogs. And I teach a class in blogging in one or two months from now. I do recommend you take that class because we do brainstorming in that class and we were able to find blog content for everyone's business because people often think, I don't know what to write about. We're going to get fellow you know, 25 other students to help us figure out what you're going to write. So that's a dis deeper discussion for the blog class. You got personality. Think of your company as a person. How would he or she communicate? How would he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. The point of this is to inform you how you will communicate online, either on your website or more often on social media. Are you going to run your social media with a very stoic voice? That means you're never going to use contractions, 
and slang? Or are you going to use your social media a bit more colloquially? Or, you know, personable and such? How are you going to write your, your, your tweets, your Facebook posts? Um, so, for example, if I have my, uh, my lawyer on Twitter, and I see that he's uh, writing like a teenager, talking about bay and fam and all of that online, I'm not going to have a lot of uh, confidence in him as a lawyer if he conducts himself like that on social media. Uh, but if I've got a daycare, if I'm looking for a daycare company, and their language online is very stoic and, you know, strict sounding, I don't want that for my daycare, I don't want my kids to be in a strict, stoic, mean daycare. So how you present yourself online is also a representation of, you know, what, what kind of company you have which will help you get the clients that you're, that you're looking for, the, the target audience that you're looking for. And then the last thing to think about are fundamentals. List the company address, website, email contact address, and any social media profiles that already exist. You may also list social profiles you would like to set up in the future. So there should be some sort of contact us page. And as I was saying on my notes over here, um, if you don't want to, if you're running this out of your home, as many of us do, I don't want to share my home number or my personal cell. I don't want to share my street address on my website for any crazy person to find or spammer. So you can get a Google Voice, which is free. You can use a contact form, which is free, but it needs some setup on your site. And you can get a PO box. That one's not free. And that ranges between, I don't know, 40 to $80 a year. It's part of the cost of doing business. That's how you can create a legitimate contact page to actually get contacted. Because if there's trouble for your product, your donation, or something, you need a way for people to contact you so that they're happy, so that best case scenario, they write a good review on Yelp or Angie's List or Google Reviews and we've talked about how that's valuable and at worst they write a bad review if you don't have any contact information they're gonna go off and complain on their Yelp or Facebook or somewhere And then it's a good idea to make a list of what social media profiles you already have. So let's say currently we have our Facebook set up and our Twitter. We haven't really used it for a couple months, but we've got it set up. What I want to say about the social media networks is claim your name on the networks as soon as possible. Go out to Twitter and get your company name. Go out to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, Peach, etc, etc, etc. Claim your name on these networks. You don't have to use them. I'm busy running my company and payroll. I've got a tweet now. It's a good idea to do so, yes, but at the very least claim that name on Twitter so no one else takes it. Someone else might take it and use it, and then now you're going to kick yourself because now you're going to be Victor's Bakery SD on Twitter instead of simply Victor's Bakery. Uh, maybe a name is already taken. I had a company business, let's say, for 20 years, and I just got the idea to get on Facebook this year. Well, my name was probably taken five years ago. Facebook's been around over a decade. Someone might have taken your company name, and I'm going to have to be the original Victor's Bakery now instead of Victor's Bakery. So claim your name on these profiles. You don't have to use them. It is highly recommended you do, but at least claim them so no one else takes them. And one of the things that I really hope the social networks fix soon is that they release old names. There are names on Twitter and Facebook and such that have been claimed, and they and they're just they lie there fallow for years. That no one's tweeted on that account for five years, and I want that name. But Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and such don't release them for some reason, and I really hope they do, because there's a lot of legitimate people that do want those names. Question? So I have my, my name on a bunch of different places, but Instagram is a good 
God has claimed my name, mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with just the call that you've given me. Mm -hmm. um, how would you recommend that I go about maybe contacting you for? You know, there's not too much recourse. I have to be cynical and say there's nothing you can do about it. But yes. you could. But. Well, how do you get in contact? That's what he's saying. There's no way to, to contact them. And technically, these networks, Instagram and such, do not allow people to sell names. So if you try to say, hey, I want to buy this that name, uh, and Instagram finds out, they could cancel the account. So uh, I know that a few years ago, Netflix, when, during the transition between them sending discs out and doing streaming because now Netflix is more of a streaming company but they had a bit of a growing pains where they um, were transitioning between discs and streaming they were gonna break their company into two Netflix for streaming and Flickster for uh, for the DVDs the problem was they never claimed the name Flickster and some pot smoking teenager had been using it for like three years so now when everyone looked up, oh, Flix, Flixster, I'm going to go, I'm going to get my Flixster account on Twitter. It was some kid that was tweeting all of these weird high school things, and, and Netflix had never bought that name, had never, not bought it, but never claimed that name. Now, t Twitter's not going to take away that name from that kid that's been using it. Uh, I think Twitter, for the big companies, they are apt to take a name for a big company if it's not being used and such. But if someone is using it, they're not going to take it away. So the answer to yours, look on the bio on the bio of the page. Maybe there's another website that is there, and maybe you can go to their website and somehow find some contact info and say, hey, is there any deal we can work out? Not really talking about money, because that's against the rules. But try to get in contact with them somehow. Maybe look at some of those pictures, and there's clues there to where else you can contact them. Short answer, you're, you're probably not going to be able to get it, unless you do a lot of detective work to try and get in contact. Yeah, most likely probably not. You're going to have to settle for a different name. But get that other name and start using it and eventually if you are able to get that name you you can kind of straighten that out. But I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, you know uh, pass up the opportunity to still have an online presence in, in Instagram with a different name perhaps but remember we talked about you know what's what's in a name nowadays any name is, is gonna work online as long as you engage in the promotion and such the marketing so here are various things to think about in the grand grander scheme of things SEO is not just about put those keywords on your site it's about developing a strategy a marketing strategy SEM so with this sheet here to think about and to write some things and again I'm not telling you fill this in and turn it in you, you don't get any grades for any of this if you want an A plus great you get an A plus but uh, this is more for yourself to figure out your the details of your company to operate effectively online so any general questions on this on this handout or concepts? Yes. Would you still go through this? Even though it's not a company, I would say you're focusing more just on a blog in general and getting that out. Would you still go through the same effort? As many of them as make sense, because let's say, okay, I'm a blogger. Am I putting my name out there simply as Victor Campos? Am I or am I putting out my name out there as you know the Tech Review Titan blog? You know, what's the kind of name that I'm putting myself out there and what kind of things am I writing about in my blog? I can think of a tagline there. Well, why am I qualified to write about this stuff? There's about us. Why do I want to blog? There's the mission statement. You know, values of why I blog. How am I going to blog? Again, am I using, you know, uh, business writing, casual writing, slang writing? How am I going to write so that I can reach the audience? If I write very professionally and I'm trying to reach a young audience, I'm going to go over their heads maybe. And then fundamentals, yeah. So all of this still, I would say, apply to applies to just about everything. Just think how you can craft it to your particular business or, or you know, entity. Any other general questions? All right. So um, let's take our first break. I'm going to turn the printer back on if you want to print, and. Um, 
We'll be back at, it's about 1.30-ish. We'll be back at 1.40, and then we'll talk more about more stuff. After the break, what we're going to do is set up the webmaster tools. So last week I had said, please come with your login information. If you have that, you know, find that up during our 10-minute break, and then we'll talk about that after the, after the break, and we'll set it up. We'll be back at 1.40.